defensively for Little Rock. Eric Musselman in his fourth season, 23-0 in non-conference home games while the Wolfpack's head coach. Eric Musselman, a winner, head coach for seven professional teams throughout his career, international coach, now a college coach, won over 500 games in his illustrious career. And yet another whistle and yet another foul. We're not even a minute into this contest. And the crew of Chris Rastatter, Glenn Mayberry, and D.G. Nelson are the officials. Chris Bankston called for that foul. And for Bankston, already two personal fouls for one of the top scorers for Little Rock. So talk about handicapping your team just a little bit over the top. And Bankston still playing aggressive off huh, with the two fouls. Well, that's what's made them good. Coach Walker has turned this thing around, at least early in the season here, from where they were a year ago. Marich with the miss, now in transition. Here come the Wolfpack. This is Martin elevating for three. He hits it. And a whistle and a foul. How about that? They hit 15 the other night against Pacific. They're right back out. They started out slow in their first game, but you can't leave Caleb Martin open for three. And that's his first bucket, I believe, in the first half all season long. Trey Porter got whistled for the personal foul. That's going to be the first on Trey Porter. Well, partner, I'm already losing track of all the fouls to get this <laughs> We're early, man. This is a really good score in Marquise Knoll. He's a 5'8 freshman from Harlem, New York. He misfires. You get him going, that could be really good. And a whistle and another foul. A minute 34 in. Darrell Walker is the head coach at Little Rock, the former NBA player. In his first season, took over for West Flanagan after back-to-back -back losing seasons. A member of the 93 World Championship Chicago Bulls and a no-nonsense guy, as we learned firsthand at the shooter. Yeah, it was good talking to him, too, because he said he wanted to be a college coach. He really felt that you can impact players' lives at the college level. And he spent 30 years in the NBA as either a player or coach. You got two coaches here going head-to-head -head who have been head coaches in the NBA. That's big time. Here's Caroline driving on the baseline and an offensive foul. Wow. I, I feel like they've called a foul on me already. <laughs> well, Jordan Caroline did a great job getting his defender in the air. Now, what he should have done probably there is come to a jump stop and shoot a little baseline jumper, but he went straight at it. you got to give credit to the defense of Little Rock to be there for the help side rotation to help your teammate who got beat off the bounce and take that charge. The first on Jordan Caroline. Team fouls are even at three apiece. The one guy in trouble, Chris Bankston, the sophomore for Little Rock. And all right, broken record, push, whistle, and a foul. How do you get into a rhythm with all these whistles? Well, you can tell the crowd doesn't like it. And what Eric Musselman has done here in his four years, improving every season, this crowd is outstanding. This is one of the best college basketball atmospheres I've ever seen. That's the second on Porter. So the senior transfer from Old Dominion has to leave, and Jordan Brown, the freshman, comes in to spell him. You know, it's interesting. I was looking today. Ken Palm has a new thing where he talks about two foul participation. It was quite interesting, and an offensive foul called on Rayshon Tucker. Welcome to those of you who just watched Western Kentucky defeat West Virginia. Steve Quiss, Richie Schuler welcoming you to Reno, Nevada. We're sixth ranked. The Nevada Wolfpack hosting Little Rock, and we have had eight total fouls. We're not even three minutes into the game so far. Elevating wing left and missing is Jordan Caroline. Little Rock still looking for their first points of the game. A Caleb Barton three, the only points for Nevada. And inside, that's Kamani Johnson off the bench, a 6'8 freshman from Brooklyn, New York. And you see Little Rock, they want to go inside out. That's their attack. The strength of their team is in the post. As you see the freshman, Brown, getting double teamed by Little Rock. Trying to put the pressure on the McDonald's All-American. And they're going to get a second on Nicola Murray. So now the two bigs. Now Little Rock is known for their inside game. And 
two of Daryl Walker's big guys inside have now been saddled with two fouls apiece in Bankston and Marich. When Nevada already has a major size advantage in just about every position, and that's how it's going to be for them all year long. And that's not good for Little Rock to be already in foul trouble with their big guys inside. Caleb Martin misses on the three. The rebound, Jacek Lottie. Not even three minutes in, a total of nine fouls have been called. This is Marquise Noel wearing number one, a terrific score. Had 34 points in the opener against Southeastern Oklahoma. That thing didn't even draw iron out of the hands of Kamani Johnson. They'll feed the post and Brown. The double team comes quickly. They fouled him last time on the double team. But you can see it's bothering him. He's a freshman. It's his third college basketball game. Ultra talented, but when he touches the ball, they're going to go after him. Trayshawn Thurman. Straight away, three look. Planks off the front of the rim there out of the hands of Lottie. Johnson came away with it. Ball is loose, and Nevada will control. Almost four minutes in, a one-point Nevada lead. They're the sixth-ranked team of the country. Putting on the floor, Cody Martin. Over the top, it goes into Caroline, and another foul. That'll take us to a break where here in Reno, Nevada, there's a new yummy tradition being born in Reno. And my partner and I had a chance to take part in it. We're back to share that with you next. Before the game, assisting head coach Eric Musselman handing out pizza to the students standing online waiting for the doors to open. These students now part of the must bus student section here in Reno. I'll tell you, Coach Eric Musselman always has energy. No matter what he's doing, if you're having a conversation with him, he has energy. He loves to be out there with the students. He's terrific in practice. And I tell you, he has his team so amped up to play today. And he talked to two of the players about, hey, you know, Yes, we're ranked, but guys can come in here and beat us. He has to keep them on edge at all times. You see them playing with a lot of excitement and energy. Has led to some foul trouble. And Little Rock, they know this is a big opportunity on a national stage. So they've come out all jacked up, too. Yeah, a lot of aggression on display here on this Friday night. Foul trouble has been the storyline early on. Already 10 combined fouls for the two teams. We are 4-0-2 in. Marriage and Bankston have two apiece for Little Rock. So that's the two bigs on the bench for the foreseeable future for head coach Darrell Walker and then Trey Porter has two and Nevada's rotation a bit shorter tonight with news before the ball game that Corey Henson is out tonight for personal reasons Caroline missed the second and there is a hook and hold for another foul against Little Rock my goodness well I tell you on the offensive end Little Rock is one of six from the field. They're getting good looks, but I really like what Coach Walker has done with his squad in the sense that they are so patient. They look for a great shot. They look to go inside first. The strength of their team is in the inside. But with these guys in foul trouble, it's all about throwing away the game plan and then going to something else. And here is the hook and hold that we're talking about right here. Looks like Marich had his hand in Jordan Brown's in between his arm and rib cage. So it's a point of emphasis this year, and it also could be a flagrant one. So the reason why play has stopped now is our officiating crew of Chris Rastatter, Glenn Mayberry, and DJ Nelson have gone over for a review, and this very well could be a flagrant one against Little Rock. The March number 22, you see him, he's, he's blocking out. Jordan Brown comes from the other side. That's number 21 for the Wolfpack. He gets a piece of the basketball, but it looked like Marich might have had his hands inside there. I think that's Johnny Koyanin. Yeah. He's a grad transfer, 6'8", out of Marshall. He played for that Marshall team last year that went to the NCAA tournament. This is going to be the seventh team foul against Little Rock, so less than five minutes in, they've already put Nevada in the bonus. Well, this is really good, in my opinion, for Little Rock. And when I was coaching, when you had opportunities like this, and you were out man, and maybe there was more talent on the other team, at the beginning of a game, this is an opportunity to calm your troops down and come up with a new game plan. Again, like you said, their two bigs in the starting lineup are out in foul trouble right now. So this is an opportunity for them to regain some confidence to find a new game plan and go right at it against Nevada. 
That will be a common foul against Johnny Colyanin. He picks up his first. It sends Jordan Brown to the free throw line for a one and one. And he misfires. The McDonald's All-American, a five-star recruit for Nevada. Well, last year they went, Richie, from the shortest rotation plan, really seven or eight guys in the NCAA tournament, to one of the deepest teams a, a few months later in college basketball. You might be generous saying seven or eight. It might have been more like five, six, seven. Right. Kick to the corner. Hey. Kolyanin misfires, and underneath there's another whistle and another foul. You have to give credit to the officials for taking control of this game right away, though. There are some ticky-tack fouls, maybe but fouls are taking place. So they are controlling the game from the get-go, sort of finding that strike zone for both teams. This might be another hook and hold. They're going to go over for another review. And if this is against Caleb Martin, it'll be his second. He'll have to go to the bench. And we told you he's yet to score a first half point all year, although he's averaging 21 and a half points a game. Let's take another look at it. Look under the basket, be an official. You see it on the opposite block. Two guys are into each other. Yeah, I think that's going to be against Brown. 21. They were sending Martin to the bench as if he had committed the infraction. So that'll be a break for Nevada. People don't understand how physical the game of basketball is, especially inside the paint. You usually follow the basketball. But a referee is looking right under the basket to see what kind of fouls are taking place in the blockout. That is a physical game down inside, as we've seen many fouls called already very early in the contest here. Look again, opposite block. The shot goes up, and two guys going at it. Is that a hook and hold? Johnson got his arm inside his man. He was blocking out. Looks like Jordan Brown in both times. I think it was Jordan Brown that was going after it. Well, the good news is you and I will be at the ESPYs to accept the award for the worst start to a college basketball game <laughs> in 18-19. We are less than four and a half minutes in. We've already had two replays and 11 total fouls. Well, but could there be any better two guys to handle this, though? Yeah. Steve Quiz and Richie Schuler. <laughs> and the two coaches here. They are going to call flagrant foul. If I'm able to eavesdrop on that conversation. You like this rule or not? I mean, you, you want to speed up the game. Everyone wants to speed up their game, whether it's baseball, basketball, and this thing is slowed this down to a fall. I'm not a huge fan of it, but yet I understand that officials put in rules for reasons to try to clean up people from getting injured, to try to make it a penalty for whatever reason. And, and so they'll look at it. You know, the, the NCAA, I think, does a great job of their officials at looking at calls, talking and discussing with officials and the officials' coordinators to find out what worked, what didn't, and voting to bring a rule back or keep it the way it is. So when it's all said and done, Kamani Johnson is going to get called for the foul for Little Rock, and that'll be his second. So you have Johnson, Bankston, and Marich. You're playing a road game. You've come all this way, 1,900 miles, and you got three guys already with two personal fouls four and a half minutes in. I should have really dug deep into that uh, Ken Palm uh, two foul profile. Does a neat thing where he tries to let people know and figure out who has the best efficiency in the first half, how long they have to stay on the bench. So check that out. Jazz Johnson in, he's a Portland transfer, squares up and they've got another three. Johnson's going to get the credit for three, but what an outstanding pass to have the vision and see a cross court for an open shooter. Elevating right in front of his bench is Ray John Tucker. He's a Florida Gulf Coast transfer in the run out back the other way. Cody Martin off the window for the bucket. Eight point advantage for Nevada in the early going. And another whistle and a foul. This is going to be on Cody Martin, the junior. Well, he just made this play right here on the other end of the floor. Good hesitation move, and he goes straight up. Made have garnered some contact there. It's a terrific play. You have to have great upper body strength to be able to take a hit in the air and still finish the shot. Caleb Martin's going to check back in on the next dead ball. movement off the ball. I see both teams having players flash into the paint with their post or perimeter. No great entry pass inside and able to finish on the baseline with a bucket. 
And a chance at a three point play here for Kamani Johnson, who averages five and a half points a game. Talk about that great pass. Look at that going inside to the freshman Johnson, who goes up and takes the hit. And he's going to have to play some big minutes in the first half with Maric and Bankston, Bankston in foul trouble. An interesting Kamani Johnson actually committed to play for Coach Walker at Division II Clark Atlanta, where Coach Walker was the previous two seasons. And he got the job at Little Rock. He brought him on board with him here as well. Caleb Martin came back in on the dead ball. He holds. He wears number 10. The senior, the transfer from NFC State, bounce pass inside to Brown. Look how quick that double team comes. And look at his strength to score over. Coach Musselman really preaching hard to his players. Little Rock loves to get up and down. You have to stop the transition. No, can't get it to fall. And numbers back the other way for Nevada. Martin wanted to pull up there and slipped. Here's Johnson. Remember how what a good score Johnson was alongside Alec Wintering a few years ago at Portland. Well, those guys scored like 90 points a night for the Pilots. Caroline pass inside to Brown. He lost the handle on it. They're going to say Kamadi Johnson touched it last. So staying with the Wolfpack, 10 to shoot. Nevada 2-0 to open the year. Easy wins over BYU and Pacific at home. Ranked sixth this week in the AP poll, their highest ranking in school history, and they're the first preseason top 10 team for the Mountain West Conference ever. And we talk about a lot of expectations for this team. Little Rock electing to put Chris Bankston back in the game despite those two fouls. That's number 32, guarding Caleb Martin. Brown had a nice look from the top of the key and buries it too. Boy, I think the potential of this kid, Brown. I, I was talking to Eric Musselman. I said, when we come back here next year, this kid's going to be the real deal, right? The story, the headline. He said, absolutely. They were able to pry him away from Pac-12 teams that were salivating to get a piece of him. Good crossover, and Rajon Tucker buries the jumper. Little Rock going into a 1-3-1 zone. Brown puts it on the floor with the right hand. He's got two more. It's a coming out party for Jordan Brown. He is eight of the 16 for Nevada. And Brown averaging just four points, three and a half boards a game. Small hey. sample size. Wow, great penetration there by Rayshon Tucker. Redshirt junior, the Florida Gulf Coast transfer with the bucket. Usually against a 1-3-1, you're going to see some open shots in the corner. It looks like they're taking off. Oh, nice pass. Oh, my goodness. Jordan Caroline with the alley-oop. An outstanding dive to the basket by Jordan Caroline. But the pass by Jordan Brown to see him going down the lane, and that's going to be offensive. That's going to be the third two on Chris Bankston. How about big to big passing? That should be criminal. Outstanding move, outstanding pass, and outstanding finish by Jordan Caroline. Uh, that's terrific basketball. of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. Nevada with a 10-point lead over Little Rock, the sixth-ranked Nevada Wolfpack. We've already had a couple of reviews because of the hook and hold. We've already had two fouls called. One was a flagrant one. The other was a common foul as you look at the NCAA rulebook. No, you can hook when you're going for a rebound. You just can't pull. You can't hold that way. And the first time that we saw this, it was just ruled a common foul. No flagrant. Look at it. He hooks him in there. You can see it right in between. There was no pull, so there's no danger to Jordan Brown's shoulder. But on this one, watch the defender. He gets inside there, but he pulls. And when they go back to review that, when they saw that, they said, okay, that is a flagrant foul. And that is, that is for safety. That's why the new rule is in place. There's a lot of players that get their shoulders yanked out of place, injuries, dislocations. It's all about a safety rule. And 
You know, you asked me if I like it. I don't love it, but I understand it. Eric Musselman talking to Chris Rastad, who came over and talked to us about the rule, why one was called a common foul, why the other one against Kamani Johnson was called a flagrant one. Nevada has the basketball at a 10-point lead. We've had 15 total fouls, two reviews already, not even half that long. Jazz Johnson drives and finishes at the rim. Significant contributions from Nevada's bench as uh, Johnson has two more. Give him five points. Brown, eight off the bench. That's 13 of the 20 off the Nevada bench. And a three-second violation is going to be called against Nikola Maric, a 6'10 freshman from Bosnia. Little Rock is doing a good job of running very patient, slow-moving offense, trying to control the tempo, but sometimes they're their own worst enemy. An offensive foul on a rebound, or uh, a three-second violation, or a hook and hold. And they're making some mistakes that are just killing them right now. Coach Darrell Walker inherited a lot of players, signed six, seven guys, but only has 10 guys on scholarship. He saved a few, so he'll have more for the following season. They've had wins over Southeastern Oklahoma and Tennessee State to start the year. A Tennessee State win was the 1,000th in school history. Johnson elevates for three. Little Rock needs a bucket. They have it in the hands of Jacek Lottie, who averages 12 and a half points a game. And a foul. A lot of chippies going on. Isre Zuzwa, 6'3", junior, also a transfer from Bryant. Had to sit out last year. He gets called for the personal foul. Already the seventh on the Wolfpack, so it's going to send Marich to the free throw line. He missed the front end of the one and one. Think about how tough practices were yesterday. Maybe some of the toughest games they played in Nevada during the week were probably on Monday and Tuesday, right here on this floor against each other. With all the five guys that sat out. <laughs> Look at that ball movement. That's a work of art. And then with the shot fake, this is textbook basketball. <laughs> this is beautiful. Unable to finish was Thurman. He was wide open in the corner right. That would have been the play in all of college basketball if that had went down. Here is Ryan Pippins with a deep three. He shed 15 pounds in the offseason to get in better shape. On the run out, Thurman draws contact. They can come right at you in the half court, and they will push it down your throat in transition if you don't stop them. And so Nevada will go to the free throw line. Trayshawn Thurman after Rajon Tucker got called for the personal his first. And so here's a look at the Omaha transfer. Scoring nine and a half points, seven boards a game. Boy, was he good in Omaha. Almost 1,200 points in three years there. Saturday, we've got two important Week 12 games for you on ABC in the Big 12 at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Central. Will Greer leads number nine of West Virginia against Oklahoma State in Stillwater, and then at 8 Eastern, it's 9-1, number 24 Cincinnati taking on 9-0, number 11 Central Florida in the AAC. As always, both games also live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Top four in college football. I don't think there's been really any great mystery. Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Michigan. See if it stays that way, huh, over uh, November. Who wins a national championship in football? Who's your bet? Alabama looks just way too good. Thirty-one starts as a freshman, scoring 12 and a half for the Trojans. Little Rock trying to mix up the zone with the man. You can always take away good athletes' athleticism when you can make them think on the offensive end of the floor. Try to confuse them. Caleb Martin, a three. 
Well, at least he has three points scored in the first half, right? To get the monkey off his back there. <laughs> first time, right? Yep. All second half points those first two games. He's still averaging over 21 points a game. He was in foul trouble against BYU in the first half. He was held scoreless against Pacific. Elevating his Tucker on the left side. No. Rebounded by Brown, who's having a big game, a coming out party. Caleb Martin, the All-American. Brown sets the screen to the corner to Zizoua. Zizoua will step back over Pippins for three. Rebounded by Marich. Tucker in the lane with a kick out. Deep three, and I mean deep by Lottie, and he buries it. You know, he's got a lot to, to prove. This is a player, Nevada actually recruited him a little bit, so you know him coming here against a top 10 team, a team that recruited him, certainly going to have something to show. How about the pass by Johnson to a streaking Nizre Zuzwa who finishes? Nevada is trying to get Zuzwa going. The transfer from Bryant. He scored over 1,000 points there in a couple of years, but started out slow. He's a great three-point shooter. I think he's one for nine, though, right now in the season. So you want to try to get him as many opportunities as you can, get his confidence up and going. You're going to need him. Elevating for a three in front of the Little Rock bench was Zuzwa and an offensive rebound by Brown. Brown's going to have like a Jordan Caroline type first half, a double-double. Look at the way Brown worked inside. Look at 21. <laughs> Got it tied up inside by Lottie. Possession arrow will point towards Little Rock. And so the Trojans will have the basketball when we come back. 7.36 to go in the first half. 24-13 Nevada. I'm always thankful in November. But with college basketball serving up Feast Week on November 15th, I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my. Tune in to Feast Week, November 15th through the 25th. And this is day two of Feast Week. We greet you here on this uh, Friday night from Reno, Nevada. I want to remind you the Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off has uh, moved to the semifinals on Saturday, the Naismith bracket, number 18 Michigan against George Washington there. And then South Carolina against Providence with that final coming up on Sunday. And Michigan had a, a big win huh, over Villanova. I tell you what, how does John Beeline keep doing it? Uh, he, he's, it's, it's a standard of excellence wherever he's been. West Virginia, Richmond, he gets it done. He has never been an assistant coach in his entire career. Started out as a high school head coach and moved his way up from junior college all the way up to the ranks. <laughs> I love those stories. Little Rock has it. They've been down by as many as 14. They're down 11 here. Kamani Johnson trying to back in on Mark. A three there taken by Marquise Knoll. Doing a good job is Nevada contesting shots. We haven't seen Caroline do much here in this uh, first half. They really haven't needed him yet. And that goes off of Cody Martin out of bounds. We were talking about coaches working their way up. This man certainly has paid his dues. It's been outstanding. Man. Look at all those years. Seven professional teams. He's coached the Dominican Republic national team, the Venezuelan national team. All kinds of different Adidas global experiences. Three to shoot. Not sure they're aware of that. Caroline figured it out, puts it up. That's an air ball, a shot clock violation. And Little Rock will have another chance on offense here with 6.37 to go in the first. What a lot of people don't know, though, about Eric Musselman is that he was an assistant coach for three years at the college level, Arizona State, LSU. And he talked about how he's he's really glad he went the assistant coach route for those three years. He, he felt like it kind of set his foundation, helped him learn the college game and create a plan for how he wanted to do it. He said, if I hadn't done that, I, he's like, I'm pretty sure I would have failed and been fired by now. And, and what he's done to humble yourself to go back to being an assistant coach after you've been an NBA head coach at the highest level, just so you can learn the college game, I, I think that shows a lot about who he is. Caroline right of the lane, another air ball. Pippins with a rebound, and will start to break back the other way for Little Rock. They need to get Noel starting to score. Pass inside. Johnson can't finish. Boy, they're making it really tough at the rim on Little Rock. 
know, with the Kamani Johnson, though, I got to give him credit to freshman number 20 for Little Rock. He keeps getting the ball down there. He's going up. He's not always scoring. But he's not scared of the talent and length that Nevada has down inside. Cody Martin with a bucket. So far, Martin's claimed the frame through two games. He's been 10 and a half assists a game. How about that? That's terrific. And, and to move from the wing to the point guard position midway through conference season last year with the injury to Lindsey Drew, their starting point guard. And now he's averaging 10 assists a game in his first full season of playing that position. Johnson got blocked by Brown after getting the offensive rebound. Told you they've been tough at the rim. Really pesky. That's a foul on the drive by Caleb Mark. It's going to be the second on DeAndre Burns here. And the freshman Johnson battling down inside. Well, you got Jordan Brown around him. You got Cody Martin. You got Jordan Caroline. Pick your poison. Jordan Brown, the freshman, with another outstanding block. And he's just showing you a little bit of what he can do through two games. A block and a half is what he's averaging. And here's a young man in Jordan Brown who played a combined 26 minutes through the first two games of the season. And Coach Musselman really trying to show him this is what the things that you need to do to get time on the floor. This is college basketball. And how touted he was as a freshman. All those points he scored in the McDonald's All-American game. Another player who's there for the team. Humbled himself, and he's doing what he's got to do to get playing time on the floor. And Jordan Brown leaves to a big ovation. Eight points, five rebounds. Little Rock down 14. Nevada's biggest lead of the game. It matches it. They had it earlier in this first half. At least the fouls have calmed down now. That's a kick. So it's going to be a reset for Little Rock out of bounds. If you're a player on the other team and, and you know Nevada's defense averages five blocks a game, would you be hesitant to go inside the paint? Maybe not you. I mean, you're all American. <laughs> But I do think that they're in the head. They have to call a timeout. They have to great defense. A lot of that's the length of on the ball, Caleb Martin. That will take us to a break. Under five to go in this first half. Nevada with a 14-point lead. Called for the offensive foul. Driving is Tucker, and Tucker will hit a three. Just their second made three of this first half, and it's a nine point game. I need to get Tucker going. He's their second leading scorer. It's a beautiful three point shot. Check it, it's an 11 point game. I had that, that mascot head on too long. There's a drive by Cody Martin, and he's fouled. No, there's an offensive foul call. I think they're going to get, if this is on Porter, and it is for the illegal screen. That's going to be his third for the big foul. Straight or close? Yeah, he is a terrific defender. And what they called there, I think, was. I think was, he was moving screen, right? Look at his right yeah. foot. So he tripped oh. Marich. Whether it was intentional or not, they're going to call that foul. And so Porter goes to the bench here. Not the least bit happy about it. Porter without a point in this game. Brad transfer from Old Dominion, who was averaging six points and six rebounds. There's a lid on the bucket for Little Rock. Johnson was looking inside for Brown, who was eight and five in the first half. Brown, I think he just has good footwork. 
Cody Martin steps back and partially blocking that was Ray John Tucker. They've got a chance here in transition. No. Kick out. Pippins is wide open. Uncontested three is short. Down for Caroline. Caroline, big dribble, no call. Good look off the window. A much better job of Caroline of gathering his body and not committing a player control foul there. Caroline has four. And an answer on the other end of three. Tucker starting to heat up, and both those three-point shots in the last two minutes have been off-the-bounce dribbles. Tucker played in 68 games over two seasons at Florida Gulf Coast, scored nine a game. Comes here as a grad transfer. He's averaging almost 15 points. And Caroline elevating for three. It was contested. Somehow it goes in. That's one of those shots, if it goes in, okay. But if you miss that, you're coming out of the game. <laughs> Riley ain't coming out of the game. Good pass inside. Marich can't finish in the lane. Well, Jordan Caroline has woken up. He's got seven in the first half. That's good body control. Didn't commit the player control foul. And then did he call the bank shot on this? I got it. Bank is open. Until February the 14th, right. they still made the All Mountain West Conference defensive team. They do not have a return date on him yet. And I'm leaning like you. I'm thinking like if things are really rolling, why rush it, right? Yeah, especially when they're so deep this season. And, and we know Coach Eric Musselman likes to play a small lineup, six seven, but great attitude. We talked to him today. He said he's uh, he, he's healing up, but we'll see what the future holds. There's a kick and a steal. Cody Martin running the break. Caroline. Oh my goodness. What the Draymond Green's going on, man? <laughs> Ray John Tucker will elevate to two. Brown's got another rebound. He's got a half dozen of those in the first half. He can do it from the outside, too, Caroline. Speaking of from the outside, that is Caleb Martin. And Caleb's been rather quiet, the All-American. Just one of three, four points in 16 minutes. Well, you know he's a second-half guy. That's right. And a foul on the block attempt by Cody Martin. Well, when defense can become offense, you know you can be a good squad. Look at this steal here. And up the floor, you find open Jordan Caroline. It gives the defender the okie doke all the way to the basket. That is a beautiful finish. Again, get a steal, go on the other end, and make the other team pay. That's the second on Cody Martin. This is Marquise Noel. Freshman from Harlem, New York. He had 34 points in the opener against Southeastern Oklahoma. He was an ESPN four star recruit. Held the four points in game number two and struggling here on the road in Reno. How about that win against Southeastern? 14 of those 34 came in overtime in a five minute span. How about that for your first game as a college freshman. Noel's been shut out here in Reno in the first 18 and a half minutes. Caroline right over the top with Tucker for the bucket. A dozen now for Jordan Caroline. Tucker backing in on Caleb Martin. Tucker from the baseline. Little fallback jumper, no good. Jazz Johnson in traffic draws contact. They're going to get Marquise Noel. Other than the obvious, how talented this Nevada squad is, they have so many players that can score on the inside, whether it's in the paint on a drive like Jazz Johnson just attempted to do or a post-up. But they have so many. Those same guys can also take three-point shots. They're a terrific three-point shooting team. And that's what makes them so good is their inside-outside threats in most every position. Now, is it good enough to close the gap out of what you've seen out of the likes of Duke? I would say, I, I would say no, yeah. 
I mean, hey, they're sitting here. They're at six. Tennessee's in front of them. They're actually ahead of North Carolina and Kentucky. I know it's early. Right. But that's a big question. You know, here's the thing about Coach Eric Musselman teams. They always improve throughout the season. You see it right there. Yeah. Oh, what a block. Wow. Caleb Martin. Wow. Swats it into the stands. I'm talking about offense. How about the defense? My goodness. <laughs> I know we're not in Las Vegas, but we're in Nevada. I want to start singing Elvis like, return to sender. <laughs> the basketball might be in Vegas. Kamani Johnson fouled on the floor on the drive. Well, that was something else. I mean, they get it done on the defensive end. And what I was trying to tell you is, is like every great coach, Eric Musselman's teams, they improve throughout the year. And this is a team that struggled early on. How are they going to gel as a squad playing a nine-man rotation? And with all these players, if, if you want to be a great team, Nevada that is, these guys, and some of these guys have a, a great pro career ahead of them. They have to be willing to sacrifice their individual statistics for the sake of the team. And that's what Coach Eric Musselman and company are going to have to show and continue to preach throughout the rest of the season for this program to be great this year. He has often said he loves when he has four guys that are not allowed to play, like transfers or redshirting, right, so that they don't start all bickering and you hear from the parents and all that. Right. Here's a steal. Kamani Johnson with Brown closing it. He throws it down. Kamani He's just Johnson. a freshman. Just a freshman. Mount Verde Academy. They've got a couple of guys from Mount Verde Academy on there, this roster. Freshman who grew up in Brooklyn. Three, wing left, Caleb Martin. Hit 100 threes last season. And Nevada's first ever preseason All-American is starting to heat up here for the Wolfpack, who lead it by 21 now. Eric Musselman still fired up across from us. You can probably see that. Mm -hmm. He wants a good defensive stand to end it. Tucker, and a blocking foul will be called with .5 to go. Much to the chagrin of one Eric Musselman. He is not happy with that call. Little Rock trying to split the defenders. And that's the last thing. You don't want a foul call in the last half second. That's, that's the way to go into the locker with a bad taste in your mouth. But he's not upset with his players. He's upset with the official. He's a uh, he's a Diet Coke guy or a Diet Pepsi guy? I can't remember. I can't get him and Larry Eustacey confused. It all, it all tastes the same to me. <laughs> But he, uh, he's trying to quit, from what we understand, get less caffeine in him during the game. Here's Tucker at the free throw line. Well, let's see. What's Coach Eric Musselman worried about here? Or upset about? Tries to split the defenders. Yeah, and Jordan Brown got a piece of his foot in it. Calling tripping. First on Brown, so he's all right. Tucker made one of two. The horn sounds, and a tremendous first half for sixth-ranked Nevada. They'll go into the locker room here on their And Bankston with three personals, two apiece for Pippins and Johnson. So some big-time two-foul participation in that first half for Darrell Walker and his Little Rock Trojans. Well, I'm expecting to see Little Rock try to push the tempo a little bit. Obviously, they're down 20 points. It's it's not their strength. They like to play a little bit of a, a slower pace at times in the half court, but they will leak out and get some fast break opportunities when they can. Nevada turns it over on their opening possession here. And so Little Rock has it for the first time in this second half. We're talking a little bit about that two-foul participation. It's a new Ken Palm metric this year I found fascinating. It's simply the percentage of time that a starter with two fouls in the first half is allowed to play. And we've got another turnover on the other end. So if a starter picks up a foul with 10 minutes left in the first half, plays one of those remaining minutes, then he's participated for 10% of the minutes that he could have. So that figure was around 20% for big-time college hoops last season. So it's an interesting way of uh, measuring things that I'm sure will get talked about quite a bit this year. Analytics amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Krishan Thurman kicking it back out. Here's that good passing that led to 12 first-half assists. Now make it 13 on 16 made field goals for the game. And Cody Martin's got a bucket. He's an all-Mountain West Conference preseason selection. 
got to look at his assist. He had four assists in the first half. Averages 10 and a half and a drive there. Rajon Tucker, who had 11 first half points, picks up where he left off to start the second half. Porter here, he's getting double teamed. He hasn't got a shot off. Well, he had like three fouls. Minutes. Yeah, four minutes in the first there. Could be his first shot here. And he was harassed underneath. Hard to feel bad for him here. Speaking of not scoring in the first half, Marquise Noel, very heralded four-star freshman out of Harlem, New York, did not score in that first half. And he was at the free throw line a couple times. Unselfish basketball. It's like a hot potato moving around the perimeter. Caroline's fouled on the attempt to get into the lane. It's going to be the first on Jay Ziglotti, sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, who averages 12 and a half points a game. Cody Martin looking for another assist and a push. That's going to be the fourth on wow. Bankston. My goodness, he only played three minutes in that first half and will likely have to go back to Daryl Walker's bench again. You can see the frustration. He is front and he is a 16 and 8 guy, two and a half blocks a game. And he's hardly played in this contest. A total of five minutes on the game, and he has to go out with four fouls. And you see the great coach, Darrell Walker, going to have to coach him through it, keep teaching him. It's going to be growing pains when you're taking over a program that won seven games the year before. They're expecting big things out of Bankston, too. Just a sophomore from DeWitt, Arkansas. And Porter in the lane over the top of the defense. Tucker, great spin move inside, but just trying to do too much. Johnson's got the offensive rebound and got it blocked again. That time it was Cody Martin. That's their fourth block of this basketball game. Caleb Martin puts it in another gear and scores with a baseline reverse. That's your AP All-American right there. And an answer on the other end, a three there by Nicola Maric, who's playing with three personals. The way he cupped that basketball and went to the other side. Wow. Cody Martin fouled. This team, this team, Nevada, getting it done on both ends of the floor. Watch the block shot here by last year's Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year in Cody Martin. And then Caleb Martin trying to go up like Dr. J from one end to the other. Four now on Nikola Maric. And if you're having a hard time telling these two brothers apart, number 10 and number 11, I am or not. They're fraternal twins. They're not even identical twins. You ask, you ask kids on campus and they can't tell them apart either. But the thing about it, they're always together. They always work out together. They take the same classes. They're in the same major. I've never been a twin before, but it's that twin thing where you're constantly together at all times. Hey, you know, they also are, are two guys that you talk about working out hard. I mean, when a game's over, like after the BYU game, they were out here taking shots along with Jazz Johnson. Other oh, hard workers, man. I was listening to the post-game show with uh, John Ramey. He pointed out that those guys were out working out after a big win over BYU. Look at this defense. Can't get it inside. Three to shoot. And an offensive foul will be called. And that is going to be the fifth on Marich if they whistle him. Oh, that's going to happen. It's great defense. Three seconds on the shot clock. You have to try to force it in. But they can't get in. Look at the way he just steps up. Porter and takes the hit. It's a guy that hardly played in the first half because he had fouls. Could have risked his fourth foul right there. But look at him take one for the team. Marich is trying desperately to stay in. He's pretending like he doesn't know he picked up his fifth. But he's got to go to the bench for the remainder of the game. He's been disqualified. And guess who comes in? Bankston with four personals. And that's, I mean, the, the big thing for this team is, is they're going to score in the paint. And they've really had very little contributions in the paint tonight because of all the foul trouble. Three by Martin. Well, you know, Coach Darrell Walker, I think he recruits really well. And, and here's a guy who's in his first season as a Division I head coach, a guy that's been a, a coach at the NBA level for 20 years, two stints as a head coach, one with the Toronto Raptors, another one uh, 
with the Washington Wizards, but it's his first Division I college head coaching job. A couple years ago, took over Division II Clark Atlanta and did a phenomenal job at Clark Atlanta, winning a lot of games over there. And they got him this job here. Caroline, the basket and the foul. And Caroline's closing in on what would be his 29th career double-double. Been in the program for three years, at least, as an active player. An old Mountain West Conference second teamer, if you can believe that, a year ago. Oh, Tucker with the acrobatic shot. But look at this, down the floor, finding your teammate. It's the first thing you're supposed to do when you inbound. Look down the floor, do you have any open teammates? Kamani Johnson just got called for another foul. Big night continues for Jordan Caroline. That's DeAndre Burns took a quick shot. 25 point lead for the sixth ranked Nevada Wolfpack. And they want more. Mm. Caroline bounce pass in the lane. That's going to be a rare turnover. They don't turn it over much. And on the run out, great passing. Tucker and finishing is Lottie. Well, you, see, you see the speed Little Rock can play up and down with. Again, this is a team that has 10 scholarship players on the roster. And I think Coach Darrell Walker will get this thing turned around in time. But they're competing. They're just a little bit overmatched. They've had a lot of foul trouble. Nevada with an uncharacteristic seven turnovers a year ago. They had the fourth fewest turnovers per game in the NCAA, 9.6 a game. On the mission. that time by Porter and that will take us to a break 1508 to go in regulation sixth ranked Wolfpack 55 Little Rock 32 Nevada 55 Little Rock 32 as we welcome you back to Reno Steve Quist alongside Richie Schuler. let's talk about uh, the Musclemans three generations of Musclemans and the all coaches uh, and of course his dad Bill was uh, just a, a great coach at every level and there's the, the three of them stacked on top of each other. See Eric in the middle Michael who's a graduate assistant for Eric here at Nevada on top and both these coaches NBA head coaches in their career Timberwolves head coach Bill Musman matter of fact both these coaches were head coach of the G League's Reno Bighorns at one point in their career. And if you go into the Nevada locker room, you're going to see three wars, the three E's. Effort, energy, and enthusiasm. And Coach Mossman says, why do I have that in my locker room? He said, every day his mom packed him a lunch in a brown paper bag. Dad would write effort, energy, and enthusiasm when mom made a sandwich. And, and there you go. Throughout his coaching career, he's used those three words for all his teams. Eric's mom lives in San Diego, and she's actually and has been for a long time a San Diego State Aztec season ticket holder. But my understanding is she's coming up for the uh, UNLV game. But maybe he meant she was coming over to Vegas when they continue this tournament during Thanksgiving week. <laughs> that was Thurman hitting the front of the rim just as the shot clock was about to expire. I had a chance to meet Bill when he was the head coach of South Alabama yeah. in the lobby of the Peabody Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee, and that year they nearly upset the national champion Arizona Wildcats in 1997. Noel, and he's finally off the schneid with a three there. You know what's funny about the two Musclemans, though? What's that? Oh, my. And that's going to be an offensive yeah. foul against Caleb Martin, no doubt about that. You'd rather see him jump stop and pull up or pivot, give it to somebody else, or hit Trey Porter there. A little bit out of control, but you see it right here. I'd like to see him take a jump stop, boom, right there, gather his feet, and then dump it down to Trey Porter. But the, the, the difference is between Bill Musselman and Eric Musselman. His dad slowed things down, very good defensively, uh, you know, and Eric is exactly the opposite. Speeds things up, and he jokes that he's not very good at defense. So he said his dad's probably in heaven right now looking at him, shaking his head like, what are you doing, son? Come on. Porter secured that rebound off the missed shot by Burns. 
It's a 20 point advantage. Nevada's led by as many as 25. Here's Brown, an excellent first half for Brown at 8.7 assists. Oh! Lobs it up there for Porter, who can't finish at the rim. Might have been some contact on that shot. And no. They didn't call Bankston for hanging on the rim, or will they? They're going to probably call that basket interference. The basket's and, still shaking. <laughs> yeah. Are they going to credit? Are they going to credit Nevada with a bucket? Came after the ball was clearly away from the cylinder. No, they won't. They whistled a uh, foul. They're going to call Jordan Brown. So that'll be the second on Brown. Here's Bankston to Tucker, who's just been all of Little Rock's offense. So explosive. See him jumping up to get rebounds. He can sky on the way to the basket. He can knock down threes. He's got 15 of the 35. Speaking of threes, in and out out of the hands of Lottie. And Caroline nearly turned it over, but Noel was unable to successfully corral it in front of the Nevada bench, so it stays with the Wolfpack. 24 to go on the shot clock. 13.02 to go in regulation. Wolfpack have a date with Loyola Chicago and three games on their schedule against Pac-12 teams. So well, they got some real tests in front of them, there's no doubt about it. And all three of those Pac-12 games. Oh, oh, do we have oh our, no. See now that's that's gonna be our third hook and hold here. Bankston went down and he's holding it, it, his left elbow. And I think that's why hook and hold is in place. Yeah. We'll need to see that replay, but that hook and hold can be dangerous, and I think they've got to go back and look at the monitor. Look at 32 Banks, and he's the one that got injured on the rebound. Now, that's not a hook. Oh, well, that's yeah, just right two there. guys going for the board, and Porter. Oh, my God, that's, that's hard to watch. Hmm. So they'll have, we'll have our third hook and hold replay of this basketball game. We had two of them in the opening moments of the game. Chris Rastatter came over and talked to us, the official here, about why the reason for this year and oh man, I can't even look at it. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to look at. I hope that young man is mm. okay. The reason why they've moved Ouch. it this year to either a flagrant one or two or it could still be a common foul is what happened to Purdue last year and an injury in the NCAA tournament that was significant. So that's why it's a point of emphasis this year throughout college basketball. It's a dangerous play, and oftentimes it's not done on purpose. But it's kind of like with the NFL right now. You know, they have these rules that are they're going through growing pains with them, and they have to find a way to play within it. You see, I believe this maybe the athletic trainer for Little Rock trying to make sure that Banks and shoulders are okay. But that that is a very cringing play to watch in growing pains through this brand new call. This is the third time tonight that we've seen this order with just a tenacious rebound. But you see here, as they both go up for the basket, Porter's just a little bit higher and doing what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to rip that basketball, chin it, and try to get control of the basketball. But the referees are going to have to decide if that's a flagrant foul or not. He's just trying to corral the basketball. A little WWE takedown there. <laughs> he seems to be okay. That's Porter's in there with four fouls, so this one should disqualify him from the game. I can't imagine how they would not call this on Porter, but we'll see. He's a transfer from Old Dominion, grad transfer. Scored 13 with six rebounds last season for Old Dominion. His career started at George Mason, then Old Dominion here to Nevada. He can run and block shots. He's going to be huge for Nevada when they get into Mountain West Conference play and get deeper into this non-conference where they play those three Pac-12 teams. And his length is outstanding. And he had opportunities to go to Boston College, Maryland, Indiana, chose Nevada. And as the officials congregate, the folks in the stands are booing him. Yep, I mean, the buffet is going to close at Harris pretty soon here. <laughs> we got to get there. The, the floor is wide open if you want to get out there and show us those <laughs> dance moves. I saw him earlier today. No? No. Okay. I mean, you were, when you're dancing, you, you drip in finesse. It just don't make no sense. <laughs> That's right. 
I was sweeping today. I was doing a little lay Miz, waving the uh, Nevada flag while the pizza was given away. Oh, you're all about uh, hanging some, out with the some Elvis. Section. What a busy night. All right, well, one of our officials will come over. Glenn Mayberry will come over. So a common foul on Bankston on the rebound. And it looks like a foul on Porter. So we're going to have a mess of free throws coming here, too. And it, it will most likely disqualify Porter and Bankston. Let's hope that young man Bankston that is okay. One play. So, and Porter gets called for a technical as well. So I think for the first time in NCAA history, somebody fouls out with six fouls, right? Yeah, yeah, four. He got the common and a technical. I mean, both these coaches were NBA head coaches. They That's might right. Play by the rules. But I hope the young man Bankston's going to be okay. Must be nice to have young, healthy joints. I don't think I've ever seen that before. A guy gets six fouls in one game. So to the right of us, we have Johnny Kolyanin shooting free throws. He's the grad transfer from Marshall. Averages two points last year. And so we are able to confirm Porter and Bankston are out of this ballgame. Marich is out as well. So Little Rock had their two bigs disqualified. Frustrating night for both those young men. Yep, and Marich is the only guy who scored. He scored three points, and that was it. And both these teams play physical. So after the technical foul, Little Rock took the free throws. And then they get the basketball. Both Porter and Bankston have been disqualified. Little Rock has the basketball, chasing 20. Still 12 and a half to go. For a team that you might recall three Novembers ago, they went to San Diego State and won. That was that, that Chris Beard coach team that were went 30 and 5. Little Rock is. is Obviously very terrific under Beard, upset Purdue in that first round in the last two years. Had a losing record. Last season they were actually 348th out of 351 Division I teams in free throw percentage. A lot of times that is a mental thing. Coach Walker going to have to work to these guys and making that a little bit better. Saturday we've got two important Week 12 college football games for you on ABC. In the Big 12 at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Will Greer leads number nine West Virginia against Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Then at 8 Eastern, 9 and 1, number 24 Cincinnati. Taking on 9 and 0, number 11 UCF. Third foul on Brown. It's now an 18 point lead for sixth ranked Nevada. Trying to go 3 and 0. They beat BYU in Pacific. There's the alley oop. Hey, that's brother to brother. Cody feeding Caleb Martin. Maybe Cody does get 10 assists here tonight. <laughs> Those two are on point with every single thing they do. Their old high school coach, Mike Absher, at Davie County's high school keeps talking about how humble those kids still are, how humble they still are, and he loves that about them through North Carolina State. And now here at Nevada, they haven't changed since they were kids. Brown pass over the top to Caroline. Here's Noel. They needed that. They get the three. It's now a 17-point game. Noel's got five points all here in the second half. The uh, freshman from Harlem, New York. The ESPN four-star recruit. Here's Caleb. He elevates over Tucker and buries the three. That's an All-American for you, huh? He's not afraid to stare you down and take the three-point shot. He has the size advantage on most players at guard at six foot seven. Back up to 20. What do you think about him at the next level? I'll tell you what, I mean, he, he can score the basketball. And, and right now, I mean, if, if he didn't have such great talent around, he'd probably score even more. I mean, he did go through and, and tried it out. Both him and his brother Cody Martin and Jordan Caroline went through a lot of the NBA stuff this summer. And now after another year of improvement, I think some of those guys have a chance, particularly Caleb. 
Brown got fouled on the drive right of the lane. Caleb Martin at AP, preseason All-American, the first they've ever had here at Nevada on the receiving end from his brother, Cody Martin. Let's take you back to March 28th of last year, Atlanta, Georgia, Sweet 16. It's Nevada, seventh seed against Loyola of Chicago, really the story of the NCAA tournament last year. Trip to the Elite Eight on the line. If you ask Coach Eric Mussman, he'll say that was their worst game of the year. They were a terrific three-point shooting team. They shot under 30% in that game. That rematch, though, I want to know if Sister Jean is going to be in the stands. <laughs> and if she is, is she going to help out Loyola of Chicago? They graduated about 13 rebounds a game, but about 30 points a game. Now, Nevada, they only have three returning players, but it just so happens that those three returning players are their three leading scorers from last season. So that could be a showdown. They still got some work to do as they go to Las Vegas over uh, Thanksgiving week, and that Loyola Chicago game is uh, the week after Thanksgiving, but early in that week. And then, of course, you have those three Pac-12 games. The Sweet 16 last year, the second ever for Nevada. And what a lot of people forget is they had back-to-back -back come from behind wins over uh, Texas and Cincinnati. That was a bad looking shot from Bull. They trailed Texas by 14, won in overtime. And as a seventh seed, they trailed Cincinnati by 22 and rallied to win. Well, you know, Coach Musman talked, he said, oh, well, we gotta watch this play here. This is gonna be something. That ball move, that's what I'm talking about. Martin can't finish on the uh, perimeter. Two years ago, in the pit at New Mexico, Nevada down by 25 with like 11 to go. Yeah, good point. They came back and won in overtime. Jordan Carolina had 45 and 15 as a sophomore in that game. And I believe Coach Musselman said, during that Cincinnati game in the NCAA tournament, that was brought up in the huddle. We've been here before. And sure enough, they came back and won the game. Block on Caleb Martin, that's going to be his third. He scored 14, the leading score for the Wolfpack, Jordan Caroline. He's one rebound away from his 29th career double-double. And a slam dunk by Rajon Tucker. They call him one of the most explosive dunkers down in the south. I think you're starting to see it. Brown elevates over Tucker, got the mismatch. And easy. He throws it down with the right hand for the baseline. It's the touch. Uh, he's not just long and athletic. He has touch. And when he starts to get stronger, when he becomes a more physical basketball player and just to college basketball, he's going to be a force to reckon with. He is the fourth Wolfpack player as Jordan Brown in double figures, 10 points, seven rebounds. He had eight of those 10 in the first half and all seven of his rebounds. Jazz Johnson drives in and count it. Blocking foul and chance of a three-point play. Ryan Pippins may have been inside that restricted arc. Jazz Johnson, he's a, he's a little guy now. He's 5'10". He's the smallest guy that plays for Nevada. And he's not afraid to take it in there. I think Pippen's back heel might have been inside or just on that restricted arc line. And that's why the blocking foul. Remember this kid in Portland. Two years ago, he scored 16 a game as a sophomore. And it was hard to score that many because you had Alec Wintering who was scoring close to 30 points a game. And now 10 for Jazz Johnson. He becomes the fifth Wolfpack player and the second off the bench to score in double figures here tonight against Little Rock. One of four transfers that sat out last season and learned the Nevada system and now are playing this year. Dropped 30 pounds since the time he stepped foot on campus. Scoring 12 a game, he's got 10, 5, 10 guard and a travel. I'm not sure we've seen a travel all night until right now. DeAndre Burns getting called for it. Seen more hook and holds than travels. <laughs> You're right about that. I've seen a lifetime of hook and holds, by the way. I They're going to be like, like booking me on CNN and Fox News Channel to talk, uh, you know, in one of those triple boxes about the hook and hold. If I was a betting man, I, I, and we are in Nevada, I would bet that you don't like the hook and hold call. <laughs> I don't. But I am certainly now an expert on it. Here's Martin. Crossover into triple coverage, got it back. Ten to shoot. Caroline behind the back, step back jumper, no good. And securing the rebound is Lottie. Lottie, no look pass inside, got stolen by Caleb Martin.
That last possession it was not one that Coach Musman is excited about. He thought it was selfish basketball, and they stopped moving the ball. You have to be careful. You have a big lead, but there's still time for Little Rock to come back. You still have to continue playing good basketball. It's not about stuffing your stats right now on the offensive end. Brown, a post move, got his own offensive rebound from the free throw line, hits it, and he's got a dozen. Now you can see why two years ago every Pac-10 team wanted this kid. He was, for his class, the top big man on the West Coast. Now, I say for his class because he was a junior two years ago. You had DeAndre Ayton, who was in high school down in the Phoenix area, right? So that was the most coveted big man. Mm -hmm. That kid played at Wood Creek, led him to a uh, state championship game in the Sacramento area, and then left for a prolific prep his senior year. Nice passing inside leads to a Ryan Pippins bucket. You see, both these teams are, are, are doing something different here. They're both trying to learn how to finish. Nevada needs to be able to try to finish big, not let a player come back. You've got to continue taking great shots. That's a great shot. But Coach Darrell Walker, for the first time, he has his team this season playing from a big deficit, and he's trying to coach his guys to not give up, to continue playing through, and you're without one of your best players in Bankston. Caleb Martin has 17, and that will take us to a break. Still some unfinished business for sixth-ranked Nevada against the Little Rock Trojans, 70-46, 725 to go in regulation. Pat Mahomes is going to light this league on fire. Touchdown, LA! They can score on just about anybody. The Rams are making a prime time statement. Showtime. What a matchup in Monday Night Football. Can't miss this. Monday, 8-15 Eastern. Of course, it's been moved from Mexico City to the LA Coliseum, and it pits Two of your MVP candidates in Patrick Mahomes. What he has done has been unprecedented for Kansas City. And Todd Gurley has been outstanding. Almost 2,100 all-purpose yards for the Rams. Well, that's two teams with the best records in the NFL. Would you put Drew Brees up there as far as an MVP candidate? And I would put Aaron Donald, though. What Aaron Donald has done on defense yeah. with all the sacks out of an interior alignment position. Can, can we get a defensive player's MVP, please? Hey, I'm, I'm right there it, with why, you. Why is it that every MVP or Heisman Trophy winner in football is either a quarterback, running back, or wide receiver? It's the nature of the beast, right? Like so you have to take the play, long ball? Exactly. You, you play one of three positions, you have a chance to be the MVP? There's a three from the right wing, elevating and scoring. is Horace Wyatt Jr. He's a freshman from Atlanta. His first action of the basketball game. Well, I'm sure Coach Musselman in that huddle talked to his players about, look, we've got to close this out, continue playing good, unselfish basketball. That was a high percentage shot by a big-time shooter, and it wasn't an unselfish shot. So coming out of the huddle, they played good, great basketball, and that's what you got to see. I, th I think you saw, started to see just a little bit of selfishness in those last few possessions for Nevada. That was the Wolfpack's ninth three-pointer of the basketball game. We had kind of wondered where they were going to get their threes from with uh, Kendall Stevens no longer eligible to play. Oh, they have more three-point shooters yeah. than they did last year for sure. He was a big-time three-maker. Now, we obviously know that Caleb Martin can stick him in Caroline when he needs to. And you, you get Jazz Johnson in there as well. I mean, Zeus Swa was was 37% shooter at Bryant. Yeah, that's a good point. Corey Henson not playing at Wagner. He was 38, 36%. He's a good shooter. And how about Trey Sean, Trey Sean, uh, Sean Thurman at six foot eight? Started the season four for five from behind the arc. At six foot eight, Caroline is doubled. Johnson out to Zuzwa. Another three attempt and fouled on it. He'll have to earn it the hard way. Will be one Caleb Martin. Martin has 17 points. He's also got four threes, six rebounds. That's the fourth there on Pippins. Caleb Martin is so good at it. He likes those stare down threes. And usually, like I said, he's taller than your defender. But he'll use that pivot foot to create space to be able to get his shot off. And it forces the defender to back up just as half a second so he can get that, that shot off cleanly. Told you that Caleb Martin, for his first two games, did not score a first half point. He's still averaging close to 22 points a night. 
That right there gives him 19. He's only been shooting 36% on the season. Makes two of three, so he's sitting there at 19. Pippen lost it, a turnover. Head fake by Jazz Johnson. Drives in, Jazz Johnson put it up and got fouled. That's player development. Shot fake, spin move, get into the paint, use your body to garner the foul. And, and he's not, you know, one that's going to be shy about going in. You think about it, Portland all the times so he had to play those bigs at Gonzaga and St. Mary's. We'll go in against those trees for three full years. And Caleb Martin sits down with 19 points, six rebounds. He made four threes tonight and had three assists. Tucker, strong, physical. And Tucker's a special player for Little Rock. I'm not sure they're going to finish last in the Sun Belt Conference. Heck no. Pick to finish 12th, but that's exactly where you want to be. Yeah, exactly. Chip on your shoulder all season long. Nobody believes you could win a game. That's Carol motivation. Uh, trying to go coast to coast and a blocking foul, so he'll go to the line. You know, they got another chip on their shoulder, too. They ordered some new road unis <laughs> about three months ago, and they still haven't arrived yet. So they've got a couple of guys that are wearing different numbers here today. And Marich and Johnny Kolyanin. And then, of course, you talk about uniforms and what, what uniform combination doesn't Nevada have. Oh, like 15 different uniforms yeah. last year. With anthracite, all sorts of. Yeah, Little Rock's going to be fine. It's interesting when they when you talk about the coaching change and, and, and Daryl Walker having 20 years experience in the NBA. He also played during his NBA career for Hubie Brown, Wes Unsled, Chuck Daly, Phil Jackson, Hall of Fame coaches. And left Arkansas to go to the NBA. It took him 33 years to get his college degree. He got it in 2012 because okay. he went through his NBA career, but it really kind of held him back from getting some college jobs. Most most administrations want you to have your degree. Finally got his degree and finished it in a year he wasn't coaching in the NBA, and then he was able to get into the college game and really feels like he can really impact lives more with young people than he can with NBA players. Zuzma, the Bryant transfer, gets a shot to go down. Up on four and a half minutes to go. Jordan Caroline has his 29th career double double. Tucker throws it down. We talk about uh, him being an explosive dunker. You get to see it there. He's going to be one of the best players in the Sun Belt Conference. He's a great shooter off the dribble. He shoots a high field goal percentage. He was 63% from the field coming into this game. He's got 21 of their 51. And Jazz Johnson with another three. Jazz Johnson has three threes. He's got 17 points. What a spoil of riches here in Nevada. An embarrassment of riches, right? Yeah. And you think, you know, they had another signee that got away because of the fact that all these guys decided to come back, right? They tested the water, decided to come back, so then it became a numbers game. Itab Amin, who now plays at Oregon, scored 25 last night against Iowa. I mean, he was signed to come here. Now, he couldn't sign a letter of intent as a transfer. He's at a Texas Corpus Christi, but he signed his financial aid papers. And then a couple of years ago, they had Kenny Wooten, who's on that Oregon team, signed a letter of intent here before he decided to spend another year at a uh, prep school after going to high school in Manteca, California. So, man, this roster could be even more loaded. They have developed something special here in Reno, Nevada. Caroline still working hard. They're still passing the ball hard. They've got 21 assists on 28 made field goals. And Cody Martin drives in and scores the bucket. Martin was held scoreless against BYU. He had 11 last Friday against Pacific. Cody 
Bobby Martin has a dozen here tonight. Cheering on and coaching his team up. And Cody Martin skies in for the slam dunk. Look at his brother, big old smile. By the way, he's hit the 10 assist mark yet again. Not even three full games, he's got 31 assists on the season. Now you know why he's up for the Bob Cousy Award. Oh! Averaging over 10 assists a game at the college level. And again, this time last year, Cody Martin was not the point guard. It was Lindsey Drew, but he goes down with a torn Achilles tendon. And Martin comes in as the point guard and is making plays like this six months later. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. Well, there's Richie leading the wave up to the top of Lawler Event Center and back. And what you couldn't see there off to the side was me having to sweep the floor <laughs> to earn my, uh, my free dinner tonight. Well, you know, got to take care of you. <laughs> Hall of Fame tip-off coming your way tomorrow, noon Eastern on uh, ESPN3, both these games, uh, Michigan and George Washington. That's a semifinal in the Naismith bracket. And then South Carolina Providence, it's a 2.30 Eastern. So you can get up, you have your choice of football and basketball. One of those great crossover days of the month of November. It's the best time of year in my opinion. Yep. The wives don't like it. We never get our rears off the couch. But <laughs> That's a good point. Here, a couple of double doubles turned in by Jordan Caroline and Jordan Brown. So it's good to be a Jordan today. And for young Jordan Brown, the freshman, that's his first career double-double, 12 and 10 for him. And he's played, by the end of this game, if he finishes out, he'll play as, a, as many minutes as he played the first two games in this one alone. There's a bucket by Jazzy Lottie. Also a double-double I've mentioned. Cody Martin, 14 points, 10 assists. His brother Caleb, the All-American, has 19 points. And just Little Rock never could get it going with all the foul trouble that their big guys had. Mary and Bankston combined three points. They both fouled out early in the second half of this. 87-55. Little Rock goes to Tulsa after this. Still part of this uh, Continental Tires invite. Well, I tell you what, you know, Coach Musselman kind of married into the ESPN family. His wife, Danielle, formerly of ESPN's Cold Pizza, talks about, hey, there she is right there. Met her at a coaching retreat. And he was actually sitting next to Lawrence Frank. Remember Lawrence Frank, the old head coach of the New Jersey Nets? Yeah. He was, they were, he, she was speaking on stage at this coaching retreat, and Coach Musman tells the story. He's like, man, I, I got to meet that babe over there. You know, how can you make this happen? And Lawrence Frank's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll make it happen. Said Lawrence Frank came back and said, must forget it. She's three inches taller than both of us. She's way too attractive. <laughs> forget it. Ended up sitting next to her at dinner, and now they've been married for nine years. How about That's that? That's cool. And if we get a dead ball, we'll show you what it was like at uh, Halloween in their house. Quite interesting. That was the night that uh, they got beat up pretty good in a charity scrimmage here against Washington. Not sure anybody saw this 3-0 start coming. There's a blocking foul. And I want to show you, dressed up like Run DMC. This was actually, the charity game was their, their throwback game, so Eric dressed up like part of Run DMC. And, and the reason why he's got his dog Swish in there is he said, we played so poorly defensively, I want Swish to break down the box score and tell me what we did wrong defensively. Man, he can, he can rock a fedora, can he? It is a gift. I want to see him wear a fedora in one of these games. Maybe we can convince him to do that. I think so, and shorts. One of these days he's going to wear shorts, too. <laughs> Not quite shorts weather. It never really is in basketball season here in that. You, you see the intensity in Coach Musman says off the court. And he loves life. Yeah. He, he's so fun to hang out with, joke with, personable. He was really thankful today that you and I helped him get out the uh, the pizzas, wants to start that tradition. There's a steal. This is Lottie. They don't give up defensively and a huge block by Cody Mark. Are you kidding me? At the 90-second mark, Richie. Wow! 
Wow! The fans that are still here are on their feet appreciating the defensive intensity. Oh, trying to stick a three is Cody Martin. What a defensive effort. Look, you're inside of two minutes to go. You could just yield that, and nobody would care. Burns a three. Coming up on a minute to go. Little Rock making it uh, respectable. More respectable, 87-59. I don't think there's a good chance that Cody Martin will get a triple-double sometime in this season. I mean, points. Points and assists seem to be easy to come by for him. It's just a matter of getting more rebounds. Now they got to get a dead ball to get to some of their younger guys in. They do have David Cunningham checking in, but got another younger guy. Everyone's trying to get Cunningham to shoot it. And nearly a shot clock violation. At three, out of the hands of uh, Cole Yonim is no good. I think if I'm, I wouldn't dribble this thing out. I turn it over, try and get that young man across the way in. <laughs> what, what, a game. what a game for number six, Nevada. And there were so many storylines, so many guys having double doubles. They had three different double doubles in the game. The two Jordans had one. Cody Martin had one with 14 points and 10 assists. And Eric Musselman's team now goes down to Las Vegas to continue. This tournament, this Continental Tires Las Vegas holiday invite.